Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about proxy workflow. Now as well as shooting, I also edit. So if I'm not out shooting, I'm usually at home editing. So today I'm going to be taking you through a great simple proxy workflow that anyone can do. So let's get into it. So today I'm going to be taking you through my proxy workflow. Now this proxy workflow is incredibly easy and anyone can do it. I use a free application to generate the proxies and you can relink those proxies in various applications. I'm going to be showing you Premiere Pro today, but it should be fairly simple for Final Cut, Media Encoder, DaVinci Resolve. So let's get into it. The first thing you're going to need is an app called Blackmagic Proxy Generator. Now this is a free app that's included in DaVinci Resolve. I don't edit in DaVinci Resolve, I edit in Adobe Premiere. So if you do edit in DaVinci Resolve, you can probably generate these proxies within the app, but you could also relink them like I'm doing today. So let's open Blackmagic Proxy Generator and get into it. So when you open the application, it's a fairly simple layout. There isn't a huge amount of options here that you can customize, but that's fine. This is a free application. And to be honest, for 99% of my work, I'm not gonna need to. Now at the top, you're gonna see a status bar. That's not going to be moving because we haven't added our proxies yet. Now underneath that, you're going to have a few variations in the proxies you can pick. I'm going to go for the lowest quality, which is the top one, because usually I just want to get the files as quick as possible and start editing. And at the very bottom, you're going to see where you can add your folders. Now you can't select where these proxies are made. That's fine. It's just going to generate those proxies in the same folder where the full resolution media is stored. Now it will create its own folder at the bottom called proxies and all of the files will be located in there. Now once the proxies are made, you can move those files wherever you want, it's fine. So usually what I do is I'll generate the proxies and then I'll put all of the proxies into their own folder so I know where they are. So my footage is located on the desktop. So I'm gonna go ahead and click add and navigate to the desktop. I'm gonna select the folder with the footage in and I'm going to click add. Now it's not going to start generating those proxies immediately. It's going to wait for you to click start at the top. So let's go ahead and click start and see how long it takes. Now, depending on how powerful your computer is, it's going to depend on how long this takes to complete. But once it's finished, you can see that it successfully shrunk the footage that I had, which was around 43 gigabytes down to under 300 megabytes. So that's going to be a lot quicker to send to someone so they can start editing. Now, if you've got a lot of footage, this could take a bit of time, but I've found in my results, it's still much quicker than Media Encoder. Now, this does accept various file formats. The only one that I've not been able to do is ProRes RAW, and that's because currently DaVinci doesn't work with ProRes RAW. Now, I think it's good to get into the habit of keeping your project folder set up in a similar way each time. So usually I'll have a folder called footage. Within that, I might have red footage, Lumix footage, proxies, so on. Under that, I'll have the project folder where I usually store my save and any files that Adobe creates. And then I'll have music, stills, graphics, so on. You don't have to use that method. I just think it's good to get into the habit of creating some kind of layout that you're familiar with. And also when you're working remotely with someone, it helps that you have that similar layout because then if you don't have files and some files are offline, you'll know where they're located. So the next thing you're gonna need to transfer this footage is some kind of file sharing app. Now, personally, I use Dropbox, but you could use any file sharing app. Maybe you've got an FTP server. So whatever program you're gonna use to transfer the files, you'll need to do it through that. The good thing about Dropbox is that I can set up the project folder in Dropbox and both parties can then access the Dropbox for any extra footage. Or even if you want to, you could leave the project file in Dropbox and work on it like that. And that means that every time someone is finished, it's gonna be automatically updated for the other person working on it. Now, maybe you're the only person working on the edit, but when you're working remotely, sometimes someone else will need to dip in to do graphics, so on and so on. Now, I don't leave the project in Dropbox because I like to be secure. So I will keep a version of the project on my hard drive. And then when I'm done at the end of the day, I will update the Dropbox folder. And I do that just because I think it's good to have a backup that's not necessarily stored online, just in case. I know that Dropbox, Google Drive, a lot of these programs have had weird things happen where files will disappear. Could be my fault, might be a Dropbox thing, but just to be safe, it's always good to keep a version of the project stored somewhere safe. So you've got your Dropbox folder, Google Drive, whatever program you're using, and you've put all the proxies into that and you've sent them over. Now, let's switch this around 
I'm now the editor receiving that footage. So I get a link from Dropbox with all the proxies inside of that folder. Now, I don't have the full resolution media, but what you could do is now start transferring the full resolution media, depending on how big it is, depending on if your internet connection is good enough. What I will usually do is I'll receive a version of the proxies first. I'll leave the full resolution media updating over the day. So now I've got the proxies, they're in their own folder and I need to start editing these proxies. I use Adobe Premiere, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a project. Now I'm gonna store project in the project file, like I said earlier, and I'm gonna import those proxies to start editing. I'll go ahead and I'll create an edit based on those proxies. But when it comes time to export, I'm not gonna have the full resolution media clips. So sometimes what I might do is send the project back and that'll be opened by the person who's got the full resolution media and the export will be done by them. Or I will be sent the full resolution media. Now, if I've got the full resolution media, you're probably thinking, but you've started editing with the proxies. So how are you gonna go about reconnecting the files? In Adobe Premiere Pro, what you can do is go to your project bin, highlight all of the video files and click connect full resolution media. Now, because the proxies that were created have kept the same file name structure, it's gonna be easy to just reconnect the full files. So what I'll do is I'll go to my full resolution media and I'll select it. Then boom, all my full resolution files are now reconnected and I can toggle the proxies button on and off. Just remember if you do it this way, you will have to change the sequence settings to match the full resolution media. Now, if you already had the full resolution media imported, you could just attach the proxies you'd made, meaning you could skip this step because you'd already have the right size timeline. So that's it guys, that's a really simple way of setting up your proxy workflow. Not many steps at all, basically just converting the proxies in Blackmagic Proxy Generator, sending them to the person that's gonna be editing, and then reconnecting the full resolution media. I use this method because the Blackmagic Proxy Generator is quick, easy, and simple to use. So I hope this has helped some of you. Let me know your proxy workflow. If you work remotely, how do you go about doing it? This is the last video that I'll be making here. We move house later in the week. So I'm gonna be doing my new office setup video, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time.